Hey, uh, while we have uh, Sam in here and uh, and Danny, we have to talk about Billy Mitchell once again. Billy, speaking of people now, who Mitchell. are great at things. Before we start this, remember, there are people out there that have not seen King of Kong. I find that hard to believe. Yeah, me too. I so know. we're going to have to really spoon feed this for the people I out wait, there. You it. mean you have not seen King of Kong or have not seen King of Kong 30 times? <laughs> <laughs> yes. King of Kong is one of the greatest movies ever made. Yes. It truly is. But it's right up there. Don't call it a documentary in front of Mr. Mitchell. Oh, really? No. Uh, Mr. Mitchell was pretty much the star of King of Kong. King of Kong, uh, Danny, you want to explain the movie for everybody that has have not seen it? Sure. Basically, it follows um, a man named Steve Weeb, who Weeby. is whatever, Weeby. who's trying to from Seattle, who's trying to uh, conquer the Donkey Kong title, which Billy Mitchell has held, held, and had held for something like. 20 years many many years and yes donkey kong jr a and side kong story. so <laughs> it's a little side story. steve <laughs> weeby goes on his big quest to to topple the king billy mitchell and king of kong uh just takes a look at the whole culture of these fucking nerds video game Still culture throwing quarters in these dumb gaming machines and not not platform games or a pc no. game uh the culture it old is school old arcades. school arcade game culture that you would think this is a huge thing with how they present it I mean, they're going state to state. There, there are people whose entire lives are dedicated to these fucking games. Well, once Donkey Kong came out, they were done adapting to the technology. That was That's it. it. That I'm was, not going to advance after this. That was the highest level yes. they could reach. <laughs> yes. So, uh, yes. Sam got a coup. Uh, Billy Mitchell, who doesn't do a lot no, of No, not Brian Coup. Billy Mitchell. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> who's part of the movie, too. Uh... <laughs> Well, the thing is, how did you guys get Billy Mitchell? Because he used to hang up on Eastside Dave. He sells hot sauce for, that's his job, Ricky's Hot Sauce. Why would he sell hot sauce if he's... Because <laughs> he's the greatest star. video game player, he's the greatest hot sauce guy. He's great who, with who has the Billy Mitchell tattoo? <laughs> Me? No, I have no, I have, I have no idea. Well, that is, got a Billy Mitchell that tattoo. That is a horrible tat, man. <laughs> it doesn't even look like him. Billy Mitchell could be the douchiest... There's so many things that are wrong with this tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't yes. look like, um... Well, he doesn't hold the record anymore, so like, it's like having like a bronze medalist tattooed on you. <laughs> and, and there's like a little on um, like underneath Billy Mitchell's bust, it says perfection, and then under that perfection banner, it's Donkey Kong and the princess. But what doesn't make any sense here is that Donkey Kong seems to be throwing the princess away yes, and not a in, barrel. <laughs> he's in that position where he's rolling the barrel, but it, it's right in front of the princess. Yeah, that's and the. The, the only thing that can make that better is if perfection was spelled wrong. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Coke Logic, Billy Mitchell's not a nerd. He's a goddamn champion. Thank you. Oh, and Coke Logic yeah. got to speak to the man on the phone. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Billy Mitchell, by the way, holds the live Donkey Kong record to this day. Steve Wiebe has the tape score. I and I do believe that he's the only man to actually play a perfect game of Pac-Man. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes. All power pellets, all perfect energizers, game. every really? ghost. So, wow. And what you see in King of Kong, you, wow. got, you got people that set, have uh, the records for all these games, and they, and they got bragging rights. So basically, like, uh, a little over two years ago, uh, Eastside Dave got drunk and, and found where he could order some Ricky's hot sauce and called up and ordered a bunch of it. Uh, the next morning, he was sober, and Billy Mitchell made the huge mistake <laughs> of calling Eastside Dave back on his personal cell phone. A <laughs> huge mistake, yes. And, and now Eastside point, Dave, Billy, uh, he's going, is this Billy Mitchell? Yes, this is Billy. Uh, you know, you ordered some hot sauce. Holy shit, it's Billy Mitchell! <laughs> Billy Mitchell! I, I fucking love you, Billy! And so, like, I'd say when... I think it was the third special delivery show ever. We were still taping shows at that point. And Dave goes, Hey, we should call Billy Mitchell. And I said, you can get Billy Mitchell on the phone? I don't know, let's try. And we oh, called no. him and pestered him and actually got him on the phone. We had no experience doing a show together. Just... Convinced him. Is this uh, your last show? Just... No, no, no. This oh, was two oh. years ago. Oh, because it sounded like you no. still have no yeah. experience no. on a show we or any just, business have... to be doing a show. But we've been doing it every okay. week for oh, okay. a year oh, and a half oh, now congrats. on this channel. You'd think it would get better. I would think so. Um, <laughs> so we've been calling him progressively throughout our careers and growing with Billy. <laughs> Very um, lovely. Yeah. Sometimes on the air and many times. Dave calls him not on the air. Just to call him. Just to call him because he can. But more recently, something changed with Billy Mitchell, and oh. he started calling Dave. Whoa. <laughs> now, really? what is that about? We weren't sure. He started, like, Dave called me once, and he goes, dude, 
Last night I got a voicemail from Billy Mitchell, and he was just calling to talk. Did he? Did he? Did he play the voicemail tip for you? I've heard it, and it's it's a little weird. It's kind of dark. It's like Billy Mitchell seemed like he was in like a lonely spot, and he needed somebody that was there. I think he probably needs people around him to inflate the ego. I would love to know if he was like I could picture him sitting in a dark room. Like, just watching his old Donkey Kong tapes, the flicker of the TV light. You hear, in the background of the message, the gentle cling-clang of ice in a bourbon glass. <laughs> and, and, he, and he's just fucking calling Eastside Dave. Because, I mean, every time he talks Dave. to me and Dave, it's just, you know, chanting about how great he is and screaming Billy Mitchell. It just, it's as if the biggest star in the world. So Well, as if. And he is. And so uh, we get to this sat or last Saturday. And I wasn't going to do the show because I was in Philadelphia for a wrestling thing. And Dave called Billy Mitchell to say, hey, I'm doing the show. I'm just going to play best ofs and stuff. I'll just get Billy Mitchell to call in for a couple minutes. And he called him and he said, hey, Billy, would you have a chance to come on the air for a little bit this weekend? And Billy goes, how did you know I was here? Oh, shit. And then Dave goes, how did I know you were where? I just called your cell phone. Right. <laughs> and Billy goes, oh. Let me call you back. Oh, <laughs> so you realize. And so Billy Mitchell actually at that point started talking to Dave, changed his travel plans because he was coming into town and got in earlier because he said, I'm going to come in the studio. I'm going to I'm going to do it live. And was that just insane? For and you Dave guys? goes, OK. And then Billy Mitchell goes, how crazy do you want to get? <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. And Dave I goes. I Billy Mitchell could get pretty crazy. Dave goes, Billy, you don't know. I'll get crazy. Yeah, he don't and know Dave then. He thought he was going to be, you know, bringing vodka and, like, just going nuts. And Billy says, you want me to bring a Donkey Kong machine? That's <laughs> fucking, that's Billy Mitchell crazy. And this right was there. Saturday morning. Yeah. The show is Saturday night. You want me to bring a Donkey Kong machine? And so Dave goes, yeah. And he goes, okay. So he gets off the phone. And so that morning, Dave calls me. He's like, Sam. Hmm. You got to come in. You can't, you can't go to the wrestling thing. I go, well, the wrestling thing is in the afternoon, so just hold him off. Oh, shit. I could get there by 10 o'clock, I'll bet. Oh, just shit. hold him off for an hour. Just do the show without me for an hour, and we'll do it. And he goes, okay. So I had to jet out from Philly. We couldn't get the Donkey Kong machine up here, but we tried every... We called the building. Security we, wouldn't allow it up, which is such a shame. How could not allow up the Donkey Kong machine? Because he is the king of Kong. Because it wouldn't fit through the metal detector. Oh, just let the, it's a fucking Donkey Kong and machine, so, and Billy Mitchell isn't a terrorist. Well, that's what that point he was brought up. He wears an American tie, for I Christ's know. sake. I said his initials are USA on a video game. Thing. Yeah. But he, uh, they said they would have had to get specialists in here to take apart the machine. Oh, my God. And inspect it for bombs. This world's getting weird. Did they have to it's hook up ridiculous. some kind of a special power source to wheel it across the street? <laughs> <laughs> I remember. Of course. <laughs> So, uh, My high score. so you didn't get the Donkey Kong machine, but you no. got Billy Mitchell on your and, show. And Steve Sanders, by the way. Uh, who, oh. Who's Steve Sanders? Who's Steve Sanders? It's I Billy, forgot who Steve Sanders Billy is. Billy Mitchell's best friend slash attorney. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're about to hear probably the douchiest guy alive. I, dis Mitchell. I disagree. And he was disproving a lot of what happened in King of Kong. King of Kong painted Billy Mitchell out to be a guy who was afraid of Steve Weeby, who didn't want to defend his score in public who had this army of people around him that was hiding the truth. And all of that is just creative editing. All right. It's let's, uh, incorrect. Let's get it uh, going. Billy Mitchell explains King of Kong on special delivery with Sam and Dave. Billy hasn't seen King of Kong is the first clip here. No, Wait, let me just say this. Because don't you think that Steve Weeby's drawing sucked? I mean, <laughs> but that Darth Vader was retarded. I didn't see the movie, so I don't know. You're bigger than the movie. At the <laughs> he's trying to say he's never seen the movie. Oh, Shut on. the fuck up. Do you think there's one thing that Billy Mitchell has been in or involved with that he, he said, hasn't seen a thousand times? He's never seen that or Chasing Ghosts, he said. He is so full of shite. What? Liar. Why wouldn't he? Now, does he explain why he hasn't seen Yeah, yeah of course he does. Prime time Sam Roberts Real is there with the follow-up. Ah, Real fast, good. Darren in Canada, go ahead. Yeah, uh, having the high score on one of those games is kind of like having the lowest T cell count in the AIDS ward. You know, oh. Either way, you're still a fucking loser. Oh, That's you're not true. losing, sir. Have you ever been in Life He's Magazine, not. sir? Life Magazine? Yeah. Billy Mitchell has never seen King of Kong. Bigger than the movie. At this point. High Road. High Road Billy over here. I've been trying to trick him and see if he answers wrong and proves that he That's has Richie seen Knuckles. the movie. He's yeah. lying. No. He's Why? spotless. Why he haven't you seen, seen the movie? movie. 
Well, the truth of the matter is they were supposed to send me a copy right when we came to an agreement. Okay. Weren't they, Mr. Sanders? <laughs> yes, they were. Steve Sanders says yes. Well, okay. Is Steve, so, is Steve your actual lawyer? Well, he was for that. Okay. Other than that, I don't trust him on anything else. Okay. Okay. But you anyway, like uh, the, truth of the, matter, the truth of the matter is they didn't send the movie, and I was really annoyed that they didn't send it. That's and then the little f festivals that they had, the closest the movie ever came to me was like 200 miles. What, I'm going to drive and see the movie? And so the fact of the matter is... I kind of got annoyed. Can I stop this for a second? Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you're in a movie, yeah. God, I dream of being in a movie, and they're showing it 200 miles away. I'm fucking jumping in my car. Listen, on. does Brad Pitt have to jump through hoops to see his latest film? He certainly doesn't. You could do 200 so. fucking miles in just four hours. But even I might. Less. I might even. You know something? I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt on this whole fucking thing. Really? But the fact is. Uh -huh. The movie now is available in your living room. Netflix instant. You could just get it. It's yeah. not like he's got to drive anywhere. Why hasn't he seen it now that it's available anywhere? Uh, it bruised the ego. He's not interested I, I would guess that he's seen the movie a hundred times. Of course he has. <laughs> That's my guess. He has not, but every question I asked him about the movie, he was able to reference the specific scene. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to drive and see the movie. And so the fact of the matter is I kind of got annoyed. And so, yeah. so I, I didn't want to see it. Well, do right. you realize, even though you haven't seen it, that the entire movie, you know, all joking aside, you are the movie. Yeah, I've become aware of that. Now, <laughs> by me, watching the movie. No, I was actually this time talking to I Billy. Feel... Uh -huh. I've become aware of that. He knows he's the star, but he's like, you know what? If you're not going to treat me like that, fuck you and your movie. He's being literal. He hasn't seen the movie. He saw the DVD. Oh, is that yeah, it? I didn't, didn't go to the actual the... movie theater right. to see it. So he's able to say he never saw the movie. I right. saw the DVD. I saw the home video release. A thousand times. Well, I moving know. on, you got uh, Steve and Billy talking about the way the film affects Billy's legacy. Yeah, because I thought that, you know, he's a Donkey Kong champion, and they make him look like a horse's ass in this movie. By the way, someone's reminded me they uh, show King of Kong on G4 all the fucking <laughs> yeah. time. Yeah, it's a popular movie. And do you okay. think he's ever sure he... thumbing through the channels <laughs> and doesn't s and sees it and he's like, oh, oh, let me get off of that. Yeah, I he sees himself this. and he just changes sees himself it. and it's like, no, <laughs> please. That guy probably has. Okay. And I'm sure you are aware everywhere. by now that they kind of paint you in a derogatory sense. Do you think that they you damaged... You shouldn't believe any of the good stuff, just the bad stuff. I don't, I'm I really don't. not that nice. Oh, really? No, not at all. Uh -huh. But go ahead with your question. Do you think that they... Uh, have they besmirched your legacy in the sense that they make it seem like you have piles of, of taped scores that may or may not be legitimate and that you refuse to compete with people one-on-one? -on -one? Do you feel like oh that... Oh, my gosh, that's not true. It, it did not actually... Oh, portray. I'm sorry. My attorney would like to answer. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah, well, that's not true. <laughs> well, go ahead, Steve. No, I mean, Billy always played head to head. Not, he, not in the movie, I didn't. Yeah, well, <laughs> the, the movie said you didn't. How does he know? Billy always played head to head. Did he it have hurt. tape scores? Yes, but for submission, never. Mm -hmm. I've never submitted a tape as a score. What was you saw the movie? For Steve example, when oh, I, yes. for example, I shellacked him in 1982 in oh, Life in oh. Life magazine in front of oh, what he, was considered to be 19 of the world's best video that, game players. That my friend shellacked was called. Okay. Right. That photograph was taken, and it was called the Sergeant Pepper's. Classic arcade. Yeah. Really you know what? Robert Murray, I just saw Chasing <laughs> Ghosts. Come on. Oh my God. Come on. Is, See, Sergeant Peppers of video games. Uh, he doesn't submit tape scores. He competes live. Yeah. The movie makes it seem like he never competes live. And how come he knows that? Because he said the movie. He like, heard of, He's heard all about the movie. But he didn't say he heard. He, 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 that kind of sounded like he saw the movie. Look at that. You ever see this geek photo? That is Sergeant Pepper. These, are, these are the arcade champions. Arcade, arcade champs. Look at Billy Mich Mitchell, the mustache. My favorite thing about this <laughs> is Billy has a gigantic hickey on his neck in this photo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's five of the most mediocre cheerleaders. <laughs> I know. You're so right. <laughs> that is a horrible picture. They're so mediocre. You're right. Danny, are you team? They might, they might as well be waitresses in a diner somewhere. Like, right. they just say, here, put these cheerleading outfits on. No one's going to know. Is Steve Weeby in that picture? Hell no, because no. he, he wasn't a part of his crew. Right. He's a natural-born loser. That's oh, why no, he's not in there. No, that's why they hate him, because he's not why, part of their crew. Exactly, right. and that's why he was kind of isolated from right. he's not uh, part of this fraternity. Yeah, what what games are represented? What arcade games? In, in I see photo? a little... We got, uh, we got Donkey Kong, Centipede, yeah. Miss Pac-Man, Defender, yeah. yep. Tempest. Tempest. And I don't even know what they hate it. Avoid Spikes. I don't even know what that is. Avoid Spikes. Stupid Tempest. Danny, are you Team Weeby? I'm team. No, I, I am team. Way. I am team Billy Mitchell. That's right. You know he's the champion. He is the champion. You Look, know that. 
Has Steve Weeby ever played a perfect game of Pac-Man? Every pellet? Fuck no. Without losing a life, making it to all the way to the last No, the last you know why? Because he loses everything he's no. ever done in life. He's lost. Wow. All of it. He's you a know, loser. He Watch should the probably get equal time on your program. He can. He's welcome anytime. Oh, yes. But he was in a band. Suck. Can I ask you something? A, a, perfect, a perfect game with Miss Pac-Man. Can you do one better and, and beat that record? Personally? No, I mean anybody. <laughs> I think no, you know, a perfect think so. game's a perfect game. You can't. Yeah, but who knows? Sometimes a perfect game means, you know, then you can do perfect game nah, plus. I think, I think like someone else could have a... a perfect game too. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's like saying you could get As 301 well. in bowling. You know? Gotcha. You, you can't. So that record will never be broken. That's it. You could tie it. Could it could be tied. No, well, someone be. does it faster than he did. Ah, that's is true. Is that possible? Ooh. I don't know. Or maybe they get to a kill screen quicker. I don't know. Uh, Steve. Kill screen, if you're... Interested? <laughs> Talks Brian about Cooper. how the movie makes him and his friends look like Billy's disciples. So a lot of you guys in that movie seemed very emotional over Billy and the way he had impacted your lives and everything. <laughs> how did you guys feel the way they portrayed you as sort of disciples of Billy Mitchell in the film? Because a lot of people used words like douche chills and things like, not us, but <laughs> oh, they I said things that. like, yeah. The truth of the matter is, I just came from this Guinness Book arcade uh, contest. Yeah. Where At Richie have, Knuckles. Uh, Richie Knuckles. Richie Knuckles. Where, China. We have, <laughs> where we have all of the guys that have been competing for years and years, and they're just Billy's friends. Right. And that's just that's just it. They're Billy's friends. In fact, when I when I uh, as I'm their friends. When I took when I showed the T-shirt there at the uh, arcade, I was almost knifed there in the arcade. Are you serious? Wow. <laughs> Not because they're Billy's disciples. They're just his buddies. Okay. Well, that brings me back, and I forgot about it. Brian Koo claimed <laughs> to <did>. be your <laughs> protege or something. Brian Koo said that? Yeah, in the movie. Yeah. I, it never felt to me like you guys were ever that close. <laughs> was I wrong about that? Is he really your protege? Are no, you his he, was, he was just saying that he's like the, he's trying to become the next Donkey Kong champ. Danny, who is Brian Koo in King of Kong? Brian Koo is the geeky, well, of course geeky, but he's the guy that's running around the arcade asking people if they'd like to see the Donkey Kong kill screen. Right. Okay. Uh, he was a banker, like some investment banker. Young guy. Young yeah. kid. And uh, I guess he just made a ton of money, really smart, retired before he was 30, and decided that he was going to retire and live his life within walking distance of Fun Spot, Fun which Spot. is an arcade in New Hampshire. Yes, Fun Spot. And he Spot. said that every day he's just going to live his life, <laughs> he's going to eat a few pancakes and some bacon strips, yeah. and play some really good video games. And then uh, try to get excitement for the for somebody that's getting close to a kill screen. And by the way, there may be a Brian Koo appearance in this studio on a Saturday night in March. All right, make sure you wow. say it on Saturday night. Wow, <laughs> you guys. I didn't want you to think I was booking. Uh, you okay. are getting the A-listers. That's right. Of, of video gaming. Of, of this King of Kong, yeah. Right, right. A-listers of one Movie. documentary of video games. Uh, but we're the source. <laughs> you are. Billy explains his wife saying she's never seen him compete head to head. Okay, that, that was in the movie. This is a major scene. <laughs> Wait, what's that? It's a shirt. It's a Brian Koo shirt. And what does it say? <laughs> it says there's a potential Donkey Kong kill screen coming up if anyone is interested. <laughs> and it's a picture of him. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a screen cool. cap from her. Yeah, I'm going to get that and in March I'll come down to special delivery You're welcome. and I will get a sign. It. That You're is welcome. why wouldn't you buy that shirt? That is the best you fucking shirt. Buy that shirt. Now, <laughs> The only reason I haven't yet is because it's kind of yellow, and that's not my color. I hate yellow uh, shirts, yeah. This is a key scene in the movie. Okay. Because the filmmaker is talking to Billy Mitchell's wife and says, have you ever seen Billy compete head-to-head? -head? His wife says no. Oh, shit. Which leads the audience to believe this motherfucker never competes head-to-head. -head. His, his own wife sold him out. But why don't we put it into context? Context. And that's what Billy did. Okay. And here's why they tried to fool you. The guy was speaking off mic, so they put the subtitles. Have you ever seen Billy compete head-to-head? -head? If you listen closely, th I'm almost positive they say, have you ever seen Billy get beat head-to-head? -head? And that's why your wife says, never. I gotta, Dave, I got to hear this clip. You hear the clip right now, Sam. Uh, have you ever seen your husband compete head-to-head -head in video games? It never. sounds like get beat. Never. No, is that... <laughs> Do they, does that sound like compete to you, or is that get beat? Listen, all right. Uh, well, I, I believe well, that they said Well, I have beat. my daughter Kimberly here. Oh my, God. Billy okay. Mitchell's daughter Kimberly, <laughs> angelic as ever. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, having have three kids, my wife has never traveled with me anywhere. Video game competition uh, related. Uh, so yeah. how could she see? I don't have any games at home, so I'll ask my daughter. Have you ever even seen me play video games? Nope, never. So there you have it. The thing is, she has never seen him compete head-to-head. -head. Why? 
because she doesn't travel with him. Ah, right. but because we wouldn't want to, we wouldn't want to abandon our three children and be neglectful right. parents, especially okay. if one of them needed to be wiped. Of okay. course, oh, 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 shit. needs to happen. Oh, oh shit! Oh damn! Face. What's Face. up, Steve Weeby? Face. When, uh, when does he practice? He doesn't need practice. He's the greatest. I've never seen him really. When did play? Muhammad Ali practice? He practiced when, when, when he was seventeen. Exactly. He doesn't need to practice More anymore. Importantly, when did Sinatra practice? What does his daughter look like? His daughter is actually hot. Really? Small. Is there a picture very of her? small. No, very she's she doesn't do any. He what do you mean very small? Like she's it, it, she's petite. How petite. old is she? She's twenty one, I believe, because she just graduated college. Is she a midget? No, she's like five foot even. Five but, foot. But Billy Mitchell is six five. How did that happen? I don't know, because his wife is five four. That's, wow. Because he has the nerd sperm. That's not true. Billy Mitchell's not a nerd. He's a winner. Well, he's a winner. Right? And okay. that's the difference. Billy's... And by the way, he just cleared that up and that shot at Steve Weeby. Yeah. Was because if you remember in the film, Steve Weeby's getting his Donkey Kong record and his kid is yelling, yes. Daddy, wipe my butt. Wipe and me. he's saying no. And he's letting the kid get worms now, or whatever. Now, how does he know that if he didn't see the movie? Once probably, again. He, he was probably told. But why would someone <laughs> tell him that? Like, <laughs> well, yeah, Steve so Sanders. So he'd make a joke about it. You would want to know the reference firsthand if you're going to make a joke like that. Why didn't you it? call him out on it? I think you guys are getting lost on the point here. Steve Sanders. <laughs> I mean, we were trying to disprove King of Kong, not Billy Mitchell. Right, uh, right, right. Billy Mitchell was not on trial here. No, he no, was a guest no, no, in our home. He was a guest, right. Billy, Is that how you treat a guest? No. Billy talks about Mr. Awesome, Roy Schultz. And this is another... Who, who's uh, Mr. Awesome for the who people that Mr. don't know what the awesome? fuck is going who's on? Who's Mr. Awesome? Well, Come Danny, on. who is Mr. Awesome? Mr. Awesome. Mr. Awesome. From King of Kong. Is a guy named, like we said, Roy Schultz. Now, when Steve... Oh, I remember this When guy. Steve Wiebe was going after his Donkey Kong record, um, he needed... A Donkey Kong board. Now, a board is, is like the game. It's like the cartridge, what goes into a console or what used to go into a console. Right. Back in the day, it's just a huge printed circuit board. So uh, he didn't have the money for a Donkey Kong board. So Roy Schilt, who hates Billy Mitchell, offered to buy Steve a board because he knew that Steve could take down or was hoping that Steve could take down right. Billy Mitchell. They're not that expensive, are they? Um, for original, yeah, they're probably a little pricey. Okay. A little bit. Not too bad, but, you know. Mr. Awesome has, uh, there's a picture of him <laughs> with some fucking fat skank. A uh, mediocre skank. Mediocre skank. Let's go with that word all day long. Just uh, wrapped around him. He's wearing a, a dumb, it looks like a post office worker's hat. Uh, he, he's giving the peace sign in front of his car, which, by the way, the license plate is M-R-A-W-E-S-M, -E Mr. Awesome. Don't forget about the lightning bolts. I, believe me. The it's lamest lightning bolts you can have on your car. It's an 80s version uh, Firebird, and it's got, it's blue, but it's got these white lightning bolts on them that look so lame. It looks like stickers that were cut out of some white fucking contact paper. Like someone, someone went to Michael's and had a good day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and a giant A on the hood, which you can either say is for awesome or make up your own A word, <laughs> but, which I think you can but, fit in there. But the A is in a lightning bolt font. Of course it is. Okay. He's Mr. Awesome. And, and Mr. His... Awesome is a tool. Oh, yeah. yeah. He is. Yes, he is. And this is a... And, and the mediocre skank, by the way, is wearing one of those suspender bathing suits. Like a Borat bathing suit. Yeah, exactly. Much. <laughs> yeah, it goes from her, uh, her pussy. And the best thing is that he's got... He's, around her neck. He's got this comic book thing that he sells or whatever. Oh, no. And it's it's the title is Mr. Awesome, the comic book life of Roy Schultz. But the best part is that there's a speech bubble above him. Yeah. And in that whole picture that you just described... It says, yo, dude, this could be you. <laughs> With the shitty firebird and the skanko wrapped <laughs> around you. Do they explain where he got his name from? He yeah. named himself. He just he named himself Mr. Himself. Awesome. He used to have. Now, you guys are really giving him. You guys are story. giving him the business here, but let's let's just bring it back Give together and hang props. on a second. He held the Missile Command world record for a very long time. Missile Command? Oh, fucking Missile Command. All right. Wow, okay. That's now, pretty tough. Here, this is a very important character in King of Kong, and here's why. Because this is the reason why Billy Mitchell doesn't like Steve Weeby. And they don't really get into that enough in the movie. The reason mm -hmm. Billy Mitchell doesn't want to associate with Steve Weeby is because Steve Weeby is associated with his enemy, Roy Schilt. We all have people that if if they entered into somebody's life, we don't want anything to do with them. Right? Right, right of course. That's him for Billy That's Mitchell. Him. But they don't really get into that. They make Billy Mitchell. Billy Mitchell's not scared of Steve Weeby. No! He doesn't but, want anything to do but, with Roy Schilt. 
But Steve Wiebe is a very average uh, person. He's a very loser. normal. Very he's normal family man. Why would he be hanging with Mr. Awesome? Yeah. Why is he be with Mr. Awesome? Yo, I can dude, see Billy could Mitchell hanging with Mr. Awesome. No, Billy Mitchell would never hang with Mr. Awesome. Because they're, they're both superheroes in their own minds. Steve Weeby hangs with Mr. Awesome because Steve Weeby is a loser and he thinks Mr. Awesome's cool. All right. Well, here we go. We got uh, Billy talking about Mr. Awesome. Let me I ask gotcha. you this question about, uh, I believe we need to talk about it. It's Mr. Awesome, Roy Schilt. Who? Yeah. Ooh, Ooh, what's with this guy? Scorn. He's a bit of a weirdo. Is that well, is I, it the case? Well, I met him in '85. Okay. And he was not in the original Life magazine cover, by the way. Correct. No. Right. And I haven't had a conversation with him in 25 years. Yeah, he's a never. So there is man. no rivalry. Strange man. And the most I've said to him in 20 once I met him and I realized that he wasn't a guy for me to know. Mm -hmm. Um. The most I've said to him in 25 years, mm -hmm. I'll tell you, the most I've said to him, if you're ready. Okay, yeah, I'm, yeah. Ready. I, I'm ready. And I don't want to repeat, so listen closely. Oh, Jared, are you ready? Hold on, ready. hold on, hold on, one second. <laughs> this is what I said to him in 25 years. Okay. It's nothing, Dave. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> I'm about to speak. No, it was no, nothing. That was it. that was it, Dave. That was it. Was it. That was the point. It was hold nothing. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's nothing, Dave. It's nothing. <laughs> okay, there you go. Hey, hey, there you hey, go. Hey, hit the sound of truth. Here's a here's Even a in no. silence. <laughs> so Billy You're Mitchell. Next sounder would. I, I must add quickly. I miss the shit out of, of Eastside Dave. It's not every Saturday. I don't listen to your show. Uh, <laughs> it's good. I'm, I'm very busy. <laughs> the company has a way of letting talented people just go. Oh, oh he's here God. still. No, he's barely here. He's here every week. So you got another show that pumps it up oh. there. So. Yeah, well, and the Sam and Dave show is a terrific show, but it's only on a few hours every once in a while. He's got 90.5 tonight. Does Dave have to get one of those clip-on temporary badges every time he comes up now? No, because they changed his status to part-time employee. But there was a time where he had to get the little... I did have to put him in the system for a few weeks. Yeah. yeah. I, he should be put in the system. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> All right. So we got Billy Mitchell from King of Kong, a, a terrific movie on yeah. Sam and Dave. And Clearing Billy, up this whole thing. Billy talks about Brian Koo and Perry Rogers. Who, this are, the, is, who are those guys? Oh, uh, Perry Rogers. Perry, uh, if, if I recall, Perry Rogers is another guy who can't... He's get, a gamer. Who can't get leave lady. 1984. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Listen, you know, he probably he probably spends all day playing Mappy or some shit. I don't talk about it. This was a huge point in the movie. And I, I already forgot. Who's Brian Koo again? Brian Koo. <laughs> in a shot t-shirt. Come on. Oh, that guy. Yeah, okay. Perry Rogers doesn't have his own t-shirt. You walked around. I so don't give a shit about these assholes. Kill screen was coming up. Dude. No, I know. This was a, <laughs> I'm just fucking around. This was a huge point in the movie. Because they said Brian Koo and Perry Rogers... Basically went to Steve Weeby's house, forced their way in, and uh, right. examined his board, and that's and, and destroyed his whole score. Holy shit! They made shit. it seem like they broke into his house. Well, that they you were know spying. What? The, movie, the movie they didn't really insinuate that they broke in, but they did insinuate that um, they were in the garage examining things without anybody's permission in the house. That's oh, what they said shit. in the movie, right? Yeah, because apparently Steve Weeby wasn't home, and he the was, only was he wiping it, his kid's ass in the car. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the wife was home, and the wife said, "I don't feel comfortable with you guys here. Can you know come back when he's here?" And they just said whatever and did what, what? they. There wasn't well, that's a sexual what, assault, was there? Uh, 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 allegedly. That's what the movie says. Mm. Danny, you ready to have your mind blown? Fuck you. Yeah. Oh, okay. shit. Let's... Did you send or know anything of Twin Galaxies sending or any of your quote-unquote disciples sending people to Steve Weeby's house? Okay. Into his garage. It's oh Brian Coe and Perry Rogers, legendary gamer Perry Rogers. <laughs> good. Did I am good, Richie Knuckles. <laughs> Perry Rogers, all I around. I watched the fucking movie thirty. Sorry, kids. all around great guy. Who I would keep never... apologizing. How old okay. are the children? Hang on, hang on. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> the the fact tangents. of the matter is, I have um, to apologize. The person who traveled about as much as me, yeah, or Go about ahead. as much as Walter, Go ahead. was Brian Coe. Okay. And Brian Coe was traveling, and we're going to go to Ground Control, which is. An equally popular arcade on the West Coast, as in mm -hmm. New England, mm -hmm. with Fun Spot. Okay. And he was going to go there with Perry. Okay. So he flew there, and from there he called and asked me if I had uh, Steve's number. And I did. Sure. I still do. He and I had shared many pleasant com or three pleasant conversations on the phone, Steve Weeby and I, each lasting more than an hour. Wow. Long before any of this. Before the movie came out. Before any oh. filming began. Oh. Okay. Wow. And so I gave him the number. And he spoke to uh, Steve's um, wife, and it was prearranged for them to be there at 2.30. Mm -hmm. And Steve got there, and he was late. Uh, oh. 
and the grandmother opened the garage Stupid and grandma. to let them play Donkey Kong, and she gave them a quarter because the machine was locked. Oh, she okay. Did. The grandma Steve came home late. Stand. You know, changed his clothes. He and Brian played a game of Donkey Kong. Together. I don't know who won. And they took pictures, had handshakes, congratulatory. That's what happened. When? And both Perry and Brian said that's what happened. Having known the two of them collectively for 35 years, if either one of them lied to me, it would be the first time. Oh. Now, at this point, truthful. Steve Wiebe now acknowledges that that is what happened. Whoa. Now, when He acknowledges that it was awkward because he hadn't met these people, Son of a gun. but it was friendly, it was handshakes. That's what I mean. That's the truth of what happened. Wow, these guys take themselves way too wow. seriously. Wow. Holy shit. Now, now, That's when, a different that story. Could the, that when could the, be the most boring story I've ever heard on the, the radio. When the Daily Sam. News and the Post called uh. to get the clip of that, that breaking news right there. Right. Uh, did you give them the uh, the audio so they could transcribe it and put it in the paper? I don't know where you got it. They actually haven't called oh, for that oh, clip oh, particularly. I thought, I, what? What's I thought they that? would have had to. It's disproving the film. It's huge. That's yeah, why that, okay, I'm saying good. it's huge breaking news. Yeah. Uh, oh God. Billy explains why he stopped calling Weeby. Because he mentioned that he had called him three times. So I said, yes. wait a minute. Why? How did this relate well, to Well, if you got, you know, if you're not a bad guy, why did you stop calling him? Yeah. You yeah. said you had hour-long conversations with Steve Weeby before filming the movie like you started. Up on that. Because yeah. every time somebody got a score uh, from Tim Serby back in the year 2000, Tim Serby, who had the world record, I didn't have it. Tim mm -hmm. Serbian? Tim Serby, who's the original <laughs> one who took it. Was he in King of Kong? <laughs> no. No. So who is this fucking guy? Exactly, because King Kong doesn't portray things accurately. Nobody. The one who took it from me. <laughs> okay. Um, like and who was deserving to be in the King of Kong and wasn't. Uh, oh. Very much so. He's a great guy and a great player. Steve Weeby. I called him and congratulated him in 2000. I called Steve Weeby and congratulated him also. But, and I invited him to the Classic Gaming Expo. So I had three hour-long pleasant conversations. Why have there been no pleasant conversations with him since Good the question. movie? Thank you. Good um, basically, I haven't called him because at one point when I realized that maybe there was a different agenda, oh, right. okay, I just didn't have a reason to call him. I had congratulated him, mm -hmm. so I stopped calling and just sort of became more isolated. Uh, uh, I, see. I want to answer that, too. Okay, that's please, Steve Sanders. Please, Steve. Sanders. Movie, please, Steve. I'm going to make it clear here. In the movie, I say to the camera, Steve Weeby, you ought to just leave Roy Schilt behind. Yeah. That was really the issue. Mr. Austin. Uh, Billy's already Mr. said Austin. he doesn't talk to Roy, hasn't talked to Roy. And when, when it became obvious that Steve Weeby and Roy had some kind of connection, that's when Billy stopped talking to Steve Weeby. This is just unbelievable stuff. I see? cannot believe <laughs> you see? that these motherfuckers are so... This sounds like 9-11 testimony, like inquiry. Yeah. Uh, 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 this is like fucking JFK Warren Report testimony. It's a fucking video game. We got to the bottom of it right here on the virus. <laughs> you Fuck sure did, it, Sam. You sure did. There needs to be a new documentary made, I think. Yeah? The King... Of King of Kong, yeah, oh, shit. and then we figure out who's just like who who's right and who's wrong. Yeah, finally, the King put of King of Kong. Put it to bed. Kong. Finally, put it to bed. I well, I right got a lot here. of source material right here. I got something to say about this whole thing. What's that? I don't care. Oh, come on. I don't care. <laughs> My jokes don't go over. I don't care. Yeah. I don't come care. on. You, you... I don't care. He doesn't care. <laughs> It's still going. I you gotta. Care. He doesn't care. I don't care. It's insulting to Billy Mitchell. I'm happy go lucky. Women call me pluck pluck plucky. I what don't do care. Know? I don't care. I don't. He doesn't care. <laughs> Listen. Uh, and that goes on for another two minutes. You're lucky oh, I stopped it there. This King of Kong story has been followed on the Opie and Anthony show for the past two or three years now. We, of course. Casually we are, mentioned it one We are day. finally getting to the <laughs> bottom of it. Uh, Billy talks about Weeby calling him. That's right. Calling you. Steve has called me twice. Regardless oh of what you see in the God. movie. Wow. Movie magic, Billy. Look at now, that when he called me in the movie <laughs> and he offered to challenge me, he had a camera in his face. Yes. Oh. Since then, he has called me one time. Funny. It's kind of like the Andy funny. Dick of arcade funny. game guys. I got the I got the call right on this phone. The message that he left me, <gasps> and it was a very pleasant message. To the point that I just well, how long ago? Less than a year ago, and it was a very pleasant message. <laughs> to the point that I thought I kept it at the front of my phone. I thought maybe I'll call him, but then, you never did. No. Then G4 said to me, "Well, 
when did you last speak to Steve? And I go, not in a while. And they said, well, he left you a message. And I go, yeah, he did. And they go, we know. He did it on camera in front of us. Oh, oh shit! So the only so time now he's the fact of the matter is, I don't want to. I don't want to call just to answer a camera. That's right. what uh, he's doing. No, and this there's is, probably is... a producer in his ear, telling him what mm. to say to make Billy Mitchell out to look like the villain once again. What is that? This? He is not. What is this? Sure, I am. What are you trying to change <laughs> I'm my? I'm right. I don't. Want... <laughs> hey, hey. Oh my god. Yeah, because why would Billy Mitchell want a camera? You know, or microphone, or anything he, that's going to oh be out God. in the... Because he's not that kind of guy. His image gets skewed. He's proven over the years that he's not the kind of guy who will just thrust his face in front of a camera. No. Or, or get in front of a microphone. Is he an ass? <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy's, Jimmy's a back. complete ass. Yeah. I walk in, just as they're playing Billy Mitchell, I'm like, he just sounds like an ass. He, he is a complete ass, but not as big an ass as Mr. Awesome. He's yeah, very specific about the media outlets he goes to. He's not just going to talk to anybody with hey, a camera or microphone. Sam and Dave show. Oh, the, good point. I'm sure he's getting a lot of requests from the media, too. But Sam he and Dave is. got Billy Mitchell on their show. And thank God we only have two clips to go. If you thank think, fucking Jesus. God. So Billy Mitchell great? Ten? Oh, he <laughs> takes himself way too serious. If you think these clips... <laughs> It's probably the biggest douche walking the planet right now. <laughs> By the way, the full interview was two hours long. Special <laughs> delivery. Two hours of this shite. <laughs> well, Eastside. I mean, great stuff. Eastside Dave also played his uh, son, Billy Mitchell Jr., in Pac Man. So oh, that yeah. was part of it. That would all be re-aired on Christmas night on the virus, by Thank the way. Thank God. Can't yeah. wait for the whole two hours. Or... And then uh, the third hour will probably be the first phone call that we had with Billy Mitchell. So we're doing a Billy it's Mitchell special. It's like a special. whole Billy Mitchell special. Yes, Christmas yeah. night. That's well deserved. Very, very smart. Well deserved. Uh, Billy talks about the scene in King of Kong. We're almost done here, folks, where he goes to the arcade Weebies in. Yeah. And when he pulls up behind the restaurant. You remember this, Danny? I sure Danny do. Danny is, is the expert on King of Kong. Well, I've seen this like a thousand times. Explain what he's referencing. Um, basically, it's a scene that makes Billy look like a puss. It makes him look like yes. he's running away from right. uh, Steve Weeb. Like I, they're eating at like a restaurant somewhere, and uh, Billy pulls up. And then when he realizes that there's like a camera crew, and he knows that it's gonna make him look bad no matter what he says right now, so he just kind of pulls. Is away that the dinner where they got all the nerds together yeah. in one mm -hmm. place for the yep. movie? But he didn't. And then Billy Mitchell pulls up, sees who's in the in the restaurant, and says, "Fuck this," and leaves. Right? Yeah, it's something like that. Well, close enough. that's what the movie portrays, doesn't it? Yes. Maybe that's not what actually happened. What? There was one scene in King of Kong. What? Again? Yeah, we gotta get... I want the truth out there for everybody. That's my motivation here. Wait, he goes again. Because <laughs> you had another question about King of Kong. What, yeah. else, what, what else do you talk to this guy about? Yeah, exactly. just dumb hot sauce? Hot sauce. What he wanted fuck? to do straight Donkey Kong talk, not Donkey... You know, not ah. King of Kong. Just video game talk. No one gives a fuck about Donkey Kong. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. He set the record. Gives a fuck. <laughs> when you are, when uh, Steve Weeby is there, and you see him, and it looks like you kind of just make a lap, realize he's there, and then walk out because you don't want anything to do with him. Well, we happen to have a film editing expert in the room here who was speaking to me about that scene oh, on, on the, the way right here. here. Is the that right the here. guy with the camera in his That's hand? That's the guy That's with Brent. the camera. Brent Dolan. Well, uh, we were, me and Billy were in the car, uh, just driving in, and I was telling him, I said, you know, when he walks into that room where Steve turns around and says something to him, you notice there's probably a good five to six steps, and these are Billy Mitchell steps, by the way. Oh, these right. aren't yes. just regular people. This guy's like, you know, six, five, like and there's two the cameras on that, <laughs> on that shoot, by the way, and you know the old cut, so he cuts there, and then there's five, and all of a sudden he's way on the other side of him. Where he's just like, you know, he's gone. Well, <clears throat> the truth is, uh, stepping one se or one bit before that, yeah, um, everybody was in the restaurant, and I walked in, and again, just to go back and to show you what an how I have isolated my family from all of this. Sure. Um, we were all there, and we were meeting Steve Sand. Yeah, he here. means by we, he's saying all the video game players were there at his restaurant. Okay, okay. Right? All right. Now, all these people that I've known for 25 years, not one of them has ever once met any member of my family. Oh. Except mm. me. Except so Because he is the lawyer. No. And me. He had never met anybody <laughs> until then. And oh, so until then. now we pull up to the back, and we're going to a family function, and we're going to go to dinner. So rather than go and say, Steve, let's go. I look out there and I see everybody, 20 some odd people, and I go, yeah, all right. I go back to the car and I say, honey, kids, everybody. We all walked in and that's the first time everybody okay. met. And we sat down at the, t I sat down at the table with Steve Weeby and they all walked I in. That. I didn't see wow. it. Wow. I mean, is that in the director's cut or something? I was there. I saw it. Yeah. What happened? 
He pulled up to the back of the restaurant. <laughs> what, what, just, Listen, yeah, please. What happened there? He pulled up to the back of the restaurant. Yeah. And then he walked into the restaurant. I think you officially lost me, too. So he did <laughs> walk in. But they didn't show that. No, they make no. it look like he drove away like a pussy. But he didn't. He just drove to the parking lot, and then he walked in with his family. And oh, that shit. matters why? Because <laughs> Billy Mitchell is not afraid of Steve Weeby. Ah! Steve Weeby is a loser. No one should be afraid of any of these people. <laughs> Ever. Really? Because they're just... Mr. Awesome? Really? <laughs> they're just video games. Should game we work? be quaking in our boots at Mr. Awesome? What about Brian Koo? He's, Brian Koo. He looks pretty scary. I mean, he did phew, retire at 30. Uh, yeah. You guys are t forgetting all about Mark Alpiger. Who is he? Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> hello. He's the guy that plays like, Crystal Castles with his feet. <laughs> yeah. He has great. a weight glove, too. Yeah, it's when you're playing marble. marble. You don't so when you're playing marble, oh, uh, you marble don't wanna, madness. You don't want to get marble hand. You no, know, he calls course. it marble. Yeah, I, I just him. call it marble, not marble. Her, herbs, herbs, like, herbs like you can call it marble. All right, I just wanted to make sure. You're a herb. And he wears a, a workout glove, so he doesn't get the marble hand. And he invented the work, the, the glove for that. Oh, yeah. He just bought it. But he goes But he sort of modified it. He found it. He said, you know what? And then took. You know, it's like you, those invention commercials, like, you know, you can make an invention better. So he decided, hey, yeah. I'm going to use this for something that's not intended to yeah. for, for use. And you know what? He's a genius. Play for marble. Wow. Play he, he called it marble hand? Marble. No, just marble. Well, he he marble marble badness, marble. He goes, well James, you know, what do you call it? When I'm playing marble, it's like, oh, he, puts it on, he probably puts it on and cups his balls and just goes in a circular motion <laughs> with his marble glove on, on his hey, balls. He doesn't want to get calluses. Let's, uh, uh, let's go to Larry King on line two. Larry. Oh, wow. How important is the first hour of the show? <laughs> <laughs> ah, shit. Let's go to Palmer in Jersey. Palmer. Boring. Boring. Oh, no. Come on, this is stuff culled from the Sam and Dave show. Right. Well, more importantly, this is setting the record straight on Donkey Kong and Twin Galaxies and King of Kong. And we got the last clip. Billy explains what happened in the arcade. What, 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 what was that? The big scene where uh, Weeby's trying to set the record and, and Billy uh, Mitchell's kind of lurking around? Is that and, the scene, right? Yeah, and it looks like he just walks out. He just walks past Steve, uh, Steve Weeby and then walks out because he doesn't, doesn't want to part of it. Doesn't happen that Danny, way. you're right. Does the name Dwayne Richards mean anything to you? Dwayne Richards. Yeah, I think so. Do you remember what he is? I don't know. I think he's a guy who plays like Centipede. Or some other 80s thing. Like <laughs> di he's like, I think he's the Dig Dug champion. Oh, no. <laughs> Dig Dug. <laughs> no. Think. Oh, 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 is Dwayne, Dwayne Richards. Wait a second. I know who Dwayne Richards is. Dwayne Richards, if, I, if I'm, wait. Yes, he's the Nibbler champion. <laughs> nibbler. He's what the is champion nibbler? of Nibbler. What do you mean, what's Nibbler? <laughs> nibbler. Dude, Nibbler is one of the greatest arcade games ever in the world. I don't think so. It's, it's a game about one. a, um, what is it? Now? It's like a worm thing. It looks like a Pac-Man <laughs> ripoff. I've never, I've never That's a Pac-Man ripoff. Yeah. No, it's, like, right. it's like Snake on your cell phone. <laughs> oh, you can't Except cross a giant arcade console. Each thing you eat, it makes you long, your snake longer. <laughs> right. And uh, you got to kind of go through the cross space and you can't cross your own yourself. body there. Oh. Right. And he's the nibbler champ, but it's it's almost wow. the exact Pac-Man board. Yeah, what a guy! Dwayne Richards holds the record. That nerd, uh -huh. <laughs> fucking guy. fuck. Boy, he's he's got to be into fucking. Fuck all of these people. <laughs> not Billy Mitchell. Oh well, no! Oh, there he is. <laughs> is that people, not gods? Or maybe You're right. Of Deities. Was he arrested for something? Oh God! Does he look like a kid toucher? Okay. Anyway, here's the final clip. Billy Mitchell explains what happened in the arcade. This is good. So anyway, so then oh. we all had dinner and we autographed books. And it was the first time my son was ever asked for an autograph. Mm. Incredible. So, I'll tell you one thing. Let's call up Steve Weeby. And, so we and signed everything. And <laughs> then eventually it was time and we left. We got to hang out with Steve. So okay. I had introduced my... How many things do you think he signed that day? Three? Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, he's a giant star. Three? So probably, I mean... My wife to everybody. <laughs> sure. And then we went to drop Steve back off at the arcade. And I had my wife with me. And she go, I, he, and I wasn't going to go in. And she goes, you don't want to go in? I go, it's okay. Again, she's not a video game person. Right. She goes, no, it's okay. We can go. And I go, you don't mind? She goes, no. And I Family called on the phone. First. I says, Steve, we're coming in. So we came in, and right at the door, Ed Cunningham was there waiting, and he mic'd us up. And that was the very first row of games we went down. Steve was there. And we stopped, and I stood behind him. Because oh. I know during Donkey Kong when you can talk to somebody and not mess them up. Sure. And I waited. And then eventually I saw where he was jumping on the monkey's foot. And I said to him, you know, something wow. like, how they treat me. He goes, oh, not good. 
And he says, I just can't get it together. I go, oh, hold I on. Never saw, I never saw that Wait, exchange. Real quick, there was a monkey at the restaurant? Did <laughs> no, I no, no. He skipped, yeah, he skipped through the arcade <laughs> scene. He's in the arcade. Oh, He's in the arcade now. Yeah. He's playing Donkey Kong. Pay attention, Sam. That's Please. Dave. No, I'm Dave. Okay. My name is Sam. Pay attention, Sam. You don't even know. So so what happened was, I stopped and I said, I said to my wife, I said, you remember him? He's the other Donkey Kong player you met in a restaurant. She goes, yeah. And I said, okay, hang in there. And I walked away. And to be honest, I'm really disappointed during all this time period Yeah. that Steve Wiebe would say that I didn't stop and I didn't speak to him and I didn't snub him. I mean, I am. I'm just me off, a guy that I had friendly conversations with. I'm disappointed that he wouldn't say otherwise. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> what do you mean? Exactly. Who fucking cares? God. He does. Me and Steve Wiebe ate fucking an omelet together? Yes. He cares gives way too shit. much. That wouldn't happen. About his own uh, it's legacy. It's awful. But this guy, <laughs> it's nonsense. Well, nonsense. now everybody can finally go back and watch King of Kong again and maybe think. With this now. Things are not yeah, yeah. as they seem. I, I don't think yeah. we learned anything right there. What are you talking about? Did you listen to the clips or no? I sort of listened. You were not listening uh, with your full I just, attention. I just felt like it was an opportunity to check my Twitter for the last hour. All right. Well, yeah, that's kind of like when you're you driving didn't... and you know you can check uh, some shit on your phone. Yeah, you, you didn't... on cruise control and you know you're all right. We can play the clips again. That's all right. No, all right. I'll catch it during the replay. That I'll have chopped up to bits. <laughs> <laughs> First hour of the show might sound very different during the replay. No, yeah. this... <laughs> <laughs> the conspiracy needs to end here. We need to remain intact yeah. with this. Absolutely. Yeah. So where are we? Where are we at with this record for King of Kong? Uh, well, Donkey Kong. Well, Steve Wiebe holds the taped record for whatever yes. it's worth, but Billy Mitchell has the live record, which oh, is much more important. Controversy. And that's as of September 20th of this year? Yeah. Steve yeah. Wiebe is now the world record holder at 1,064,500. With a tape score. A lot of Donkey Kong action in the latter part of 2010. Mm. Yeah. How high does this game go? Because there's a, there's a kill sc uh, screen. So how do you get higher than that? Well, you, you, they just keep trying to sneak in whatever, however many extra thousand points they can before their kill screen comes right. up. Right. Yeah, it's like it's a you just have to jump more barrels to stay in the game a little longer. Yeah. Mm. There's ways to do it. You could sit there and jump barrels all day if you wanted to. So why don't they do that on the first board? Well, I don't know. I never made it that far. <laughs> well, not. I mean, I've made it to the first board. <laughs> <laughs> more importantly, though, really, honestly, who gives a shit? I would think well, a lot of people do, and you know especially what? the Billy Mitchell Sam, family. I'm going to back you up. Jay in Virginia okay, great, does great, great, great. give a shit. Oh, uh, okay. Jay? Yeah. Go ahead, Jay. This is the worst shit I've ever heard. I'm switching oh. to War of the Roses is so bad. Oh. <laughs> well, that didn't... <laughs> He the tricked, worst shit he tricked, he's ever he tricked, heard. He tricked me, Sam. I thought it, that was a positive call. I'm sorry. Well, can we go to some of the other callers who want to talk about this? I would love to, Sam, but Jay is uh -huh. the only person that has called in the oh. last 45 minutes. And oh. Jay, you couldn't have been more pleasant. <laughs> no, I, I had to switch for its radio station to it so bad. Oh, wow. There is another call coming in, finally. Okay. <laughs> finally. <laughs> I think we officially have had three phone calls since we started the yeah, show. Hot, wanna, oh, very I, hot topic. I wanna, it's early still. I want to thank Sam for this. Let's say hi to Josh in North Carolina. Replay will be better. Josh. What are we going to talk about next? Napoleon Dynamite? Please get to a point. Oh, boy. Yeah, what's Napoleon, your point, boy, Sam? We I don't even know like what the Napoleon point is. Dynamite. Well, because you, you and Anthony have said for many days and years that Billy Mitchell is a douche, and this was kind of me proving that he is not. Whoa. <laughs> Did that not come across? <laughs> Whoa. This guy is very full of himself. Uh, who, Billy Mitchell? Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, man. All right, I guess that's uh, that's it. Thank God. Well, I mean, <clears> yeah. <throat> Moving on to Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> Did you know that Uncle Rico was actually a vegetarian? He really? spit out that steak. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. No wonder he chucked that, that steak at Napoleon. Anybody calling about that? <laughs> See, phone's yeah, yeah, Anybody calling about that? <laughs> well, yes. no, but we got John in Jersey. Uh, John. Hey, I just want to say thank you guys for the last hour of audible rape. <laughs> <laughs> audible rape. Wow. You, wow. You, you feel like you, you weren't entertained in the last hour something. by the Billy, the Billy Mitchell stuff? Yeah, I think he's feeling something was forced into his ears against his will. <laughs> is, is that what he's It's like getting an audio at? rape. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. Thank you, sir. I'm going to go on to Cody in uh, Wisconsin. Cody. 
Hey, guys. Hey. I just tuned in about a half hour ago. I was wondering if I missed something yesterday. Is this the last show before you guys go on vacation? Uh, <laughs> linger longer. Yeah, it does seem like one of those, but uh, uh, unfortunately, no. no. Nope. This was very important no. to do today. Let's say hi to Tom in Manhattan. Yo, what's up, man? I, I have an hour commute into the city, and I am literally almost fell asleep four times behind the wheel. <laughs> well, that's dangerous. You should get more shit. sleep. Oh, very, the very. Worst, dude, it's the worst shit I've ever, ever heard. At least you now know where you were when we did the worst shit ever on the radio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least we have answered that question, without a doubt. You're not uh, being fair to Billy. Let's say hi to Michael in Texas. Michael. Mike? Hey, guys, props to Sam. This is a great Jocktober episode carried into December. Jocktober's wrong. <laughs> Billy Mitchell would never do a Jocktober show. Uh, let's go to Jimmy in Connecticut. Jimmy. Hey, this is real, man. This, this stuff hits in the heart. Oh, he didn't do the bit right. No, he didn't. Do the bit! <laughs> it's okay. Bye, bitch. For the next hour, we're going to discuss uh, Back to the Future. Yeah, for everybody. Buddy. Oh, That's yeah. That's a bad conversation oh, yeah. to have. Yes, we are. We're going to do that for everyone. Game's coming uh -huh. out 22nd. What? <laughs> <laughs> Safe to say the phones are now lit, Sam. What they got. So you did your job. Yes, that's right. Uh, Once again. Let's go to Eric in Boston. Eric. Yeah, hey, uh, Sam, this is a great job. Uh, Thank you. Ramon, uh -huh. get this Nathan Poop off the air. Uh, uh, who see. are you referring to? See, he got you on that one. Was he, yeah. he remoted you. He was calling me a Nick. I love five-year-old callbacks. Let's go to Nick <laughs> on Long Island. Nick. Oh, these guys are horrible, man. I want to drive into a fucking pole. They're ridiculous, these guys. Oh, feel get the feel the free. Exactly. Punch it out, dude. A little racist, but... All right. God damn. All right, well, the phones are now lit. So, well, so yeah. they were sort of listening to yeah. they were. Yeah. Oh, they were absolutely listening. And we got the truth out there, so I feel good. I don't know how you guys feel. Yeah, as long as the truth got out. That's All important. Right. We, uh, we're going to take a break, and we're going to start the Opie and Anthony show. Yes. After these messages. You're listening to Opie and Anthony.